Okay, in case any of you don't know, my name is George Armstrong, and uh, we're going to do <coughs> something on tool making today. The reason we're going to make tools is mostly for problem solving. You got something that you can't <coughs> get at some way, or, or you're, it just won't work, you, you got to make a little different tool to do that. Uh, most of the time, you can't buy them off the shelf. There's other reasons to do that. One is to save you a little money, which is all, always okay. Another one is to figure out whether you want to spend the money to buy a, a, a tool like that uh, <clears throat> without actually spending the money. <laughs> if you want it, you can go buy it, but there's no sense of going down and spending 100 bucks for something that well, maybe I won't want that. So, <clears throat> to start out with, there's all different kinds of things we can do to uh, make tools. And <clears throat> one of them is just regrind some of the tools that you already have to make them work in a different way. This is just a standard uh, spindle gouge. You grind it a little bit different. You flip it over upside down, and you've got a beading tool. And it, this will work better than those flat ones, flat beading tools that you have that you can buy in the catalog. You can buy some other ones that are similar to this. They won't be rounded on the back. There'll be square section on the back. They'll have the groove, and they're actually the same thing. So, <clears throat> and this angle will control the shape of your bead. If, it, if it's a little bit too football shaped, your bead, steepen that angle up a little bit. If it's uh, too flat on top, Bring it back a little bit. So, and there's, it's not hard. You just need to keep these little points right here on the ends sharp. Oh. <laughs> so anyhow, that's that's kind of how that that works. And it's it's exactly you can buy them. It'll cost you fifty to eighty bucks if you buy them. You can just take a cheap gouge and uh, regrind it, and that's the way it, and it comes right out. It works just exactly the same. The, the fellow that does all of the basket illusions, that's what he uses. Here's another one that's a gouge, sharpened a little different. I don't know whether you can see that or not, <coughs> but uh, instead of using it like a gouge, like you'd use this way, we're going to tip this one up on edge and go straight in. You can go in and core out a small piece doing that. It'll work similar to a parting tool. So, <clears throat> you can look at that one. Now, at the end of the thing, we're going to we're going to make a hook tool which is going to be similar to this one right here. And these work excellent. They're for ingrain use. They don't work worth a two cents the other, on the, when the grain's running the other way. <coughs> but uh, what I want you to do is, is uh, I'm going to pass this around. We're going to have to get it back to uh, make the tool. But uh, look at how this is ground to start with. You're going to grind it down. It's just a narrow triangle shaped. You're going to come back about a, I don't know, inch and a eighth, inch and a quarter, somewhere in there. And when we get done, it's going to be bent around, and it's going to look like this. So go ahead and take that <coughs> and pass those around. That's going to be water hard, uh, tool steel. I didn't want to start too many big fires in here using oil hard. <laughs> you 
uh, or stink the place up <laughs> with a bunch of oil smoke. And it, you can use, uh, you know, carbon steel is all right to use. That's all how, you know, that's what your tools were made out of to begin with, you know, in the old days. The only problem you have with it is, is sharpening. You just got to be careful not to get the heat in it. But as far as hardness, a, a file is, uh, is water hard tool steel, one that you're going to file metal with, and, and they work perfectly fine. Uh, <clears throat> another reason you kind of want to make tools is that if you're going to do one or two things and, and you're never going to use that tool again. You don't want to go out and spend a lot of money for a tool. You can grind them out of screwdrivers. Screwdrivers, most screwdrivers are water hard tool steel. They're not hardened up as hard as, as some of the other stuff. Uh, <clears throat> but that it doesn't make any difference. It'll get you through one or two pieces and by that time you're, you'll either know that you want to go buy a tool, make a different tool, or you've used up, you know, you're only going to make a couple pieces and that's it. You can grind them out of files, thick files, not thin ones. Be uh, cautious because they're going to be, your files are a lot harder than what normal stuff is, <clears throat> than your normal tools are. These are going to be up about as hard as you're going to get a piece of steel. From about right in here someplace, that seal, steel is going to be soft there on down on the tang. That's so that the tang don't break. Sometimes <clears throat> it's a different type of steel that's, that's actually welded across there. Sometimes they're just induction hardened and they don't <clears throat> pass this part through the coil to heat it up. It's done both ways. Uh, but be very careful when, if you're going to use a file to make something out of. <clears throat> unless you want to anneal it. And you can anneal it. You take and uh, heat it up red hot with something. Uh, you can stick it in a bucket of garden lime or in a bunch of dry wood ashes. You know, real fine wood ashes. And just let it sit there. It'll take a day, day and a half, maybe two days to cool down. And then it'll be soft. You can do whatever you want to with it and reharden it and just harden the end of it at that time. But that was something there that I wanted to, I was having a problem getting at something and uh, I just made a scraper and that shape and, and I don't use it anymore. <laughs> it sits there. I haven't thrown it away yet. I'll grind something else out of it or maybe someday I might use it again. Never know. <clears throat> so. And there's all kinds of little things you can, you can do. These little tools here, I make these and I don't know, what, what are they, about 60 bucks if you go buy one. They don't last as long, I resharpen them, but I probably have uh, maybe a dollar in that piece of steel. Make your handles. And I enjoy making the tools as much as I enjoy cutting the wood. <laughs> I've probably cut more iron and, and steel than I have wood. So This is one that was a problem solver. Have you ever had a sand, wanted to sand the inside of a hollow form and you can't reach it? Now we don't have to reinvent the wheel for every tool we make. What this is, This is a screwdriver, power screwdriver, you can buy it at 
Lowe's or Menards or hardware stores or any place. <clears throat> the names I've seen them on are uh, Milwaukee or AIG. They're the same thing. They have a little thing up here that you hold your thumb on against to use as a screwdriver. You take that off and chuck it. This is a standard hex drive extension and uh, it's just got a little collar on this one with spring loaded so it just goes on. Piece of copper tubing. That end is a bushing that's, that's uh, taken out a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> copper is soft enough if you're careful you can turn it in your lathe. The other end got a piece of brass for a bearing in it, soldered in it. That's all it is. And it does work. And I just press this in down in here. I can find a hole here. That's all it is. So it doesn't have to be real complicated to do this stuff. You just have to stop, think, what will work when you're walking through the hardware store or the big box store and you're going past this stuff. Just have a project in mind that you want to do and, and look at everything. It says, can I use this? Can I use that? Maybe I can, maybe I can't. And don't be afraid to fail. This? Yeah. It's just a sanding disc uh, <clears throat> with, a, with a hex on it. And what I did with that is I couldn't, I couldn't get one with that hex on it that went all the way down. I can get them with a hex on it that goes up, you know, that's up farther and that's round. So what I did is I just cut this down. I did it in the metal lathe. You can, you can put them and chuck them up and uh, file them if you have to. I drilled a hole in a piece of hex stock and CA glued it on. Don't be afraid to use CA glue because it will hold. And, and that's, that's really all it is. So. This one here is a modified skew. You can see it's got a little notch out in the corner right here. Now what this is for <coughs> is you take a piece of uh, in your green wood, you want to make little decorative trees or something like that. You come in and you cut with this heel right here, just go along. And, and make a little short, a series of little short cuts, and it'll become obvious to you. This part right in here will round it and flare it out. So when you get all done, it's going to look like a tree. <coughs> okay. This one, if you, any of you guys have your ring tools, or, uh, <clears throat> or a termite tool or something like that, you've already got this part. It's going to have a quarter inch hole in here. You're going to have your set screw in it. All this says is a router bit in there. Now you can take your router bits, carbide or whatever, steel, doesn't matter. And you can put these in here, especially if you chip one. And you've got one side that's no good and the other side is. You can use them for turning. Just a piece of coal roll. Got a hole tapped in it. A set screw put in it. And your router bits there. What diameter do you use for the coal roll? What? What diameter do you use for the coal roll? Three quarters or half? This? Yeah. I don't know what this is. I think it's five eighths and I just filed, filed it down here on the end, rounded it off. 
The reason I use that mostly is to uh, have enough room for the set screw, have a few threads in there. <coughs> All you guys that's using the disc tools and stuff now, I was using these a long time ago before they really came out with a carbide. And what I'm using is a sheet metal deburring tool. <clears throat> That's what this is. You can, you can sacrifice one end. It, the, those are double sided. So you can either sacrifice one side or you can shim it up with a, a couple of real small washers and uh, pull them down. These are high speed steel. They come in a, in a package of 10. Package of 10 costs about $35. Plus you can resharpen them. And you, <clears throat> you've got all kinds of stuff that you can use these for. You can use them just like the disc tools. And with a disc tool and a uh, and, uh, hook tool too, when you start to turn it, you do not start with a cutting edge up. You start with it vertical and roll it up. If you start with it up, <laughs> the, you, it's going to grab right old. It's going to be really aggressive. And the same thing is going to go for that hook tool. Or a ring tool as far as that goes. Here's another one I use that in. This goes in the, the stabilized boring bar. I, I have one that's over there. It's kind of like a Jameson. And it, uh, I was going to set this up on that other lathe, but I see that lathe has disappeared. But yeah, maybe I will. But it just goes in here. And if you'll notice, that is set on a 45 degree angle. And that's about where you're going to cut. It's not set vertical and it's not set flat. So. Now this is what I was going to set up for you, but I can't, is this now. <clears throat> last month there was somebody that asked me asked about uh, the McNaughton uh, coring device. They are. <clears throat> I looked at a lot of those before I, I decided to have one. Uh, matter of fact, I made my own, and <clears throat> it's just like the ones you buy, but it. I just made it. This eliminates the problems that you have with that uh, with that McNaughton coring device. If you've ever used one, you're always you have to pull up on the handle rather than than hold it down. And if something happens and and you and you get down a little bit low, it catches. And they're just clumsy to use. They're one of the most versatile ones that there is, but they're hard to use. This takes all the work out of it. Sets in your, uh, <clears throat> sets in your, this is just a stabilized boring bar, sets up the same way. You got the piece back here. <clears throat> but I don't have to worry about that handle dropping down because the, the back end of it's going to hold it up. It's going to go through your uh, your McNaughton device, just like this. It's the same thing. Let's see if I can hold it all up here. And it's going to go around just like you normally would. This is going to go in your banjo. 
This is back into this is going to go on, uh, on that back piece where you stabilize it. And I can run this in here two, three inches with a lathe running and just let go of everything. And it's going to sit there by itself and nothing is going to happen. And you're not going to do that without this. <laughs> I'll guarantee you. <laughs> no, that's, that's what it is. And that's, what, that's why we make tools and, and, or modified tools, is to take a problem that we have, something that isn't working well, make it work better. It'll also get you to where you can't go with uh, stuff you can buy off the shelf. So, you guys can look at this. Remember, it's loose. So. I, I made this, but it's the same as what you're going to buy. Exactly the same. I, there, there's some new ones now that's got like a little yoke that goes down underneath it. I don't know whether that's... That's for just uh, the smaller size stuff, or whether it's a change that they've made in it. I know the smaller ones go, you've got the raised part. Yeah, yeah. But I meant it's back here. Yeah, I don't know. That kind of, pretty much like mine. Yeah, this is, the, this is the way they were made before. Yeah. And, uh, but I've looked, saw in the catalog that they have almost like a little yoke that that tool is going to go through. Maybe it's to help, maybe they've had so much trouble and complaints with it with the guys dropping them, that they did something like that. I don't know. I haven't seen one in the flesh. This piece here, this is a, a portal line. Standard piece, you can buy this piece right off the shelf. Now the only thing I did to it is I put the chuck on it and left it on. It's made for you to put your drill on the back end and take your chuck off the drill and uh, put your chuck on the front end. Well, that's a lot of monkeying around. Just took a fine threaded bolt, 3 8 fine thread, which is what your drills are. Just put it in there, put a lock nut on it, and cut it off. The only other thing I did to it was put this piece on. Didn't have to drill a hole in it. The holes are right there. Uh, this goes in your banjo, and you're going to use this in conjunction with your indexing and go in and, and drill some holes in your, in your piece. And it'll look like a lot like that piece right over there in that bowl that has those little round plugs in it. You can go in there, make the holes, and put the plugs in after your piece is pretty much turned. You'll have to go back and finish those plugs off, but that's it. Uh, One way makes one that's kind of kind of like this, but it isn't. They they make it to hold your whole drill, your whole drill motor. What happens there is almost all of those drill motors are real sloppy on the bearing, and they as soon as you touch the drill to it, they just go all over, and you get a real sloppy hole. And unless you're going to cut it again after you've, you've, uh, you've taken that, <clears throat> put your plug in and take quite a little bit off, it's, it's going to be a mess when you get done. This eliminates that. It's got bearings on both sides right up here. Uh, so, <clears throat> and they're fairly snug. They're just a bronze bushing, but they work. So, and your drill goes on the back, and you, that's it. And there, it's good and snug. And you can buy that off the shelf. You, yeah, this is this you can buy off the shelf. The only thing it isn't going to have on it, you're not going to have the chuck on it, and you're not going to have this piece on it. This is just a piece of coal roll that fits my banjo. 
My banjo takes a one inch. It's got a flat on that coal roll. That's like easy enough. What? Well, yeah. And they work. They work. They work actually better than the, than the stuff you're going to buy off the shelf. So. So there's a lot of different things you can do, and it's just a matter of stopping and thinking. Huh? So there's nothing to it. Most of the stuff any of you guys can do. I have a little bit more equipment at home, and most of you know it. <clears throat> but I'm bringing stuff here that, that most of you guys can do. That uh, you can, yeah, you don't. You can grind that flat on there, you know, for the to, to clamp it up to your on that piece of coal roll. You can uh, take a hacksaw and saw it if you're not too lazy. <laughs> or you can run down to uh, Plainwell and take George out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> now here's another piece that I made up. Now this. <coughs> This is going to be similar to what those pictures are around, <coughs> where, where it's just, this goes in your, it's smaller, this goes in your uh, banjo. You can put a sled on here, run a small router on there, or uh, make, a, make a sled for your uh, oh, a little small grinder, whatever kind you happen to have. And uh, you can cut designs on it. One thing I did with this one that isn't done with most of them is I made it so I can elevate it. So I can run uphill. When you do that, it's, gonna, it's not a spiral that you'll get out of it, but it'll give you the illusion of a spiral. And you can set this and run it any way you want, you know, any, any place you want to set it. So. This is just a couple of old hinges that were laying around, a couple of little pieces of plywood. There's a block on the back. Uh, this part right here is a lid support. This is a bolt with a head cut off. Uh, this was tapped for one inch eight. So I use a one inch eight bolt. One inch fits my banjo. You don't have to do it that way. You can you could just take a piece of one inch stuff, and it doesn't have to be solid, and you could glue it in there with some CA glue. Now CA glue will <coughs> it'll stay there. If it falls off, you can glue it in again. You know, there's no big deal. But I doubt if it's gonna fall off. But all this stuff is fairly simple, fairly easy for you to make. Doesn't take a lot of equipment. And probably the most of it is what you got right there. Now this right here is one of the handiest tools that there is. And there's nothing to it. This piece of steel here, round stock. The hole is drilled in at the angle. Piece of a broken tap right here. <clears throat> I originally started out using it like a scraper, just grind the, ground the flat out, out of it. It didn't, it, it would work, but not as well as I liked it. So I just took a, a small grinder and ground a groove in here so it's like a like a gouge now. And how many of you have ever been up with your tailstock pushed right up close and you're trying to get in there and finish the backside of something and you can't reach it? What this does right here is I can come in right up in here and get right up to the center. And I'm not trying to come in here with a straight tool like this. I use this all the time. 
The tap is just CA glued in there. And it's been in there for several years. Don't discount using CA glue to put your tools together with. Or JB Weld. That's another product that you can use. They make it for different stuff, and uh, that stuff works. <laughs> if you want to change the bed, all you do is heat it up. And heat it up, pull it out, put yeah. another one in, CA glue it in. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, that set of, I believe it's Jorgensen Halloween uh, tools, that's how his are put in. So, <clears throat> but that's extremely handy. <coughs> Again, there it is. You've got a problem with trying to get at something. And uh, you can't get it. You just make a tool for it. And you're not going to find that on the shelf. I'll guarantee you that. So... <clears throat> That stuff is all, that stuff, is, the broken taps and stuff, they're all high speed steel. Uh, just, <clears throat> you know, just because you've, you've broken it and, and you can't use it for what it's meant to doesn't mean you can't use it. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so now, if we can find those uh, hook tools, We'll start some fire here. He was trying to get out the door. Huh? He was trying to get out the door. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Just a can of water. Pairs of pliers. Sometimes this stuff gets warm. But not always. Remember, heat runs uphill. Well, it runs downhill. Huh? <laughs> Lots of things run downhill. Some things like me don't even run. <laughs> Come on. There you go. All right, now. The hottest part of your flame is right here at the end of these little tips. It's not down in here. This is a lot cooler down, down back up closer to the torch than it is right at the end of these little pencil points. So all we're going to do is just heat this up. The only reason I'm using two torches is it's going to be a little quicker. You can, you can do this with one. Huh? Those yellow paints burn hotter. Uh, 
Map gas? Yeah. Doesn't matter, use whatever you got. You got a acetylene torch, use that. What you want to remember doing this one is not to bend it the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, this end, this end is cool. This end is cool. Now well, what we're going to do is we're going to bend this around, tip it out a little bit. Now by heating that torch, you take the hardness out of that then? Huh? Have you taken the hardness out of that then? It's, it was soft to begin with. It was soft to begin with. And when, if you're going to heat stuff up and bend it, you do want it in a soft state. You don't want it hardened. All I did is tip that back so that it makes this a little bit more accessible to the wood. So now we're going to harden it, and we're just going to harden the end. If you need water, will harden it? Huh? Dipping it in water, will yeah. harden This, this, <coughs> you can have three, well, there's actually more than that. <coughs> uh, for what you're going to use, you're going to either want to use oil hard or water hard steel. Uh, oil hard is probably going to be the easiest for you to get, uh, although if you can get water hard, which is, this is. You usually get it in the form of drill rod for, for this kind of stuff. It comes in three foot lengths. And if you screw it up, you just whack it off and make another one. So if your first one don't work out right, don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. When you quench them, don't throw them flat in a pan of water. It'll warp them all up. Don't, don't just take, you'll see a lot of people take a piece like this and just throw it into a big pan of water. Don't do a pan of water like a wash tub or something. Don't do that. Uh, it just warps everything all up. It cools one side quicker than it does the other. And it, <clears throat> the side that cools shrinks. The other side stretches and you'll end up with a piece like that. That's just a piece of sandpaper. All I'm going to do here is uh, take a little bit of this scale off. Warm way up there close. The reason I'm taking this scale off is so I can see what color this piece is. We're going to be a little careful when we draw this back. Now this is as hard, probably about as hard as we're going to get it right now. And it's going to be brittle. And that's why we're going to take a little bit of that 
temper back out of it so that it'll uh, won't snap off when you try to use it. Yep, just heat it up, but we don't heat it as hot. If you're uh, if you're having trouble doing this, you can actually go in and steal your wife's oven when she isn't looking. <laughs> steal your wife's oven. Yeah, the one you got in your kitchen. In the neighborhood of uh, 400, 450 degrees, somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you might not, if you oil quench it, you might not like the taste of the cake. <laughs> yeah, so if you do uh, use oil hard. How long would you leave it in the oven? Huh? How long would you leave it in the oven at 400? Basically, you use it, uh, it sets in there an hour for an inch of thickness. So, once it's up to temperature, half hour, 45 minutes. It doesn't, it isn't going to hurt it if it stays longer. That's going to harden the whole rod anymore? No, it won't harden the whole rod. It won't do anything to the rest of the rod that's soft. Because we never got it hard. Okay. All we're going to do, now this time we're not going to hold it in there. We're just going to play with it a little bit. Now when we get this done, we can do one of two things. We can either quench it again, or we can just throw it out and let it cool by itself. Either way will work. Yeah, kind of a straw, straw yellow. We don't want to get it blue. Remember, your heat's going to go to your narrow edge, and it's going to rise. Right there, we got eh, just about the right color on there. We want to get down this way. Hold it down, and your heat's going to try to go up here. about right. It's a little past straw, but it's uh, way before it turns blue. And you see what I've done right here. Now all we have to do is sharpen it. We're going to go in here with a small grinder on the inside with a mounted wheel and just clean that up. And that's the only time you'll ever have to do that. Then you're going to, all the rest of your sharpening is going to be on the outside. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, somebody's going to take that home with them and finish it out. Tell me how they like it. And how that, how that happens, I'm going to leave that up to Jeff. But that's... <coughs> That uh, these work excellent on ingrained stuff. They don't work on the other stuff, and they'll work <coughs> really by pulling it rather than pushing it. That's what you got, and that's it. Doesn't take a long time, and it doesn't take a lot of a lot of equipment or a lot of effort to make this stuff. And if there's any questions, we'll, we'll try and answer them. <laughs> this video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.